for joining us now to analyze uh, the impact of these results. Uh, leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, Arun Jaitley. We've also got Shekhar Gupta, editor-in-chief of the Indian Express with us. Arun Jaitley, to you first. Uh, in a way, a, a, a mixed bag for the BJP. Good news from, from, from Goa, certainly. Consolation from the Congress's performance in Uttar Pradesh. But disappointed yourself, I know, by your performance in UP because you were hoping for, for, for more, weren't you, Mr. Jaitley? Well, obviously. I have reason to smile in certain cases. And I'm certainly concerned uh, as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned before, because we were hoping to do somewhat better than the performance that we've landed ourselves in. Mr. Jetley, are you also concerned that your votes in almost all the states have gone down compared with last time? See, you've, you've held on to the government in the Punjab, thanks to the Akalis, but your votes have gone down actually. Is that a matter of concern? Well, you see, that's, uh, no, I, I'm not seriously concerned about the vote going down in Punjab because normally after running fi a five-year government in Punjab, you find a certain amount of anti-incumbency. Now, uh, as far as urban Punjab is concerned, a far bigger anti-incumbency was anticipated in our case. But I think we managed to save the day. We won more than 50% of the seats that we contested. And therefore, uh, certainly I would have been happier with a few more seats. But it's not possible to repeat a performance of 19 out of 23 every time. Yeah, right. But UP and Uttarakhand, where the votes are down? You see, Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand uh, I think, has been influenced by one important factor. Once the data is available, we'll be able to analyze it. I think the BSP from its eight seats and a higher, higher vote share collapsed somewhat in the plains of Uttarakhand. That benefited the Congress, and this two, three seat difference has come substantially because of that. Now, Arun, uh, for my mind, uh, you're one of the most analytical minds of elections. In fact, you're a semi cephologist, half lawyer, half cephologist, I think. Just give us your analysis of this election. What happened, uh, what went wrong and what went right for the different parties, very quickly. Well, I'll do it in two stages. As far as the big national picture is concerned, I can clearly see an anti-Congress mood in the country. And I think that's influenced from Maharashtra to Goa to Uttarakhand to Punjab, <coughs> all over. The Congress performance in Uttarakhand and Punjab considering the advantage of an anti-incumbency could have been much better. Secondly, I think Uttar Pradesh is a serious concern for us. And unless we in the BJP are able to bulldoze our way into the first two major players of UP, we'll never be able to get that considerable advantage of an anti-incumbency. On, on now, Uttar what Pradesh, appears to be sorry, happening sorry, while you're at that, Pradesh, sorry, yeah. about, sorry to interrupt, while you're at that, your comments on selecting Uma and uh, Narendra Modi not campaigning. Hmm. Just your analysis of that. Yeah. Well, the, the two have nothing in common. Narendra <laughs> Modi didn't campaign because he was busy in uh, 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 Gujarat. Oh, That's sorry. not really party decision. It was his personal decision. Oh, sorry, I'm very busy. It was his I personal can't decision. <laughs> So uh, it was his personal decision. Mr. It was Jaitley, not a party decision. Mr. The Jaitley, party wanted him to campaign. Mr. Jaitley, the, to elaborate on yeah. that question, Nitin Gadkari took two decisions that many people in the party were not in, fully in agreement uh, over. To reinstate Sanjay Joshi, which is why Narendra Modi stayed away, and to bring in Uma Bharti. Looking back, right decisions or gambles that didn't pay off? In your opinion? You see, as far as the Uma Bharti decision is concerned, I think it was a correct decision for the reason that the party, in order to enlarge its own social base, needed an effective leader, particularly a backward caste leader. And I think even though we didn't do well, I think Uma's uh, induction into the campaign at least enabled us to campaign effectively. We were campaigning on issues of governance, but the social combinations are also essential. We endeavored to create it. We didn't succeed in entirety. As far as Sanjay Joshi is concerned, the president has not given him any post in the party. Like an ordinary worker, he was asked to assist the team of UP, and he did assist the team in UP. It's obvious when you appoint a person, there may be people who have a different view. There can be two views possible, and two views perhaps did exist in this case. But Arun, uh, there is an alternative view, and I probably, if you took off your political hat, you uh, might see the relevance of that. After... 
the towering Mr. Advani, there are so many aspiring next leaders in the BJP, full of talent, one of them yourself, but there are about six or seven. And every decision you're making is jostling between these six or seven and every decision is a compromise. You couldn't get a local man from Uttar Pradesh because there's, it doesn't fit in this jostling. This jostling in leadership, isn't that costing <coughs> the BJP? Pranoy, let me take off my political hat on your advice. <laughs> Thank you. Why shouldn't every party have six or seven leaders? Why should political parties in India say, my leadership will run through a family and nobody outside can get it? Therefore, like you have in England, you have in the United States, parties have preliminaries, parties have inner party conventions where you elect leaders. And, and the BJP, since we don't have that system in India, if we have six, seven leaders in that category, I think it's an asset. Therefore, it's not necessarily a sign of some infighting. At the appropriate time, the party will decide who is the first amongst equals. Now, that had nothing to do with UP. Our strategy on UP was a completely unanimous. The strategy was that our conventional vote, which has come to us, we must give an adequate signal to that and contest on issues of governance. We right. have not succeeded. Not because this strategy was wrong, but because the entire advantage of the anti-incumbency against the BSP has gone to the, to the Samajwadi party. And therefore even votes, the upper caste votes, some segments of the backward votes, which do not normally go to Samajwadi party, must have also gone to them once the results are analyzed in detail. Okay. Shekhar, Shekhar, you were saying in the morning that one of the problems for the BJP is that it has not resolved the Modi riddle. It hasn't decided what Modi is to the party. Uh, Arun Jaitley makes the good point that it, it's good that there's more than one candidate not derived from a single political family. But doesn't it become a problem, Shekhar, uh, when there is seen to be a perceived factionalism uh, within the party on account of that? Uh, Shekhar, it's like a cricket team. It's like a cricket team with six vice captains. <laughs> no captain. Or six captains. Drop him. <laughs> Sorry, uh, go, go well, ahead. Well, I mean, the, the problem with uh, with, Mo, uh, with Modi, the dilemma is a bit different. Uh, BJP is not able to decide whether Modi is an asset or a liability, or then he is an <laughs> asset or a liability. You cannot have. Okay, uh, he is not your prime ministerial candidate. That's fine. But is he somebody you need to hide in Gujarat while your party is fighting an election in a state without, as Arun said, without winning which at least uh, we are reaching the second position, you can never hope to rule India. And you've ruled the state, you've got 55, 60 seats in this state. How can you keep your, one of your most significant leaders away from it? Nobody is going to buy the argument that Mr. Modi was busy. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I have heard more touching arguments. Maybe Mr. Modi's teacher would believe him. Or maybe Mr. Mo uh, Modi's uh, uh, okay. We have parents would believe him. I want. Okay, joining us now on the phone line, unfortunately uh, uh, not over satellite, is Uma Bharti. Uma Bharti, I still think you're one of the most charismatic leaders of the BJP. What went wrong? What troubles did you face? I think uh, people wanted uh, an alternate to BSP because people were better with their corruption. And uh, this is uh, a matter which is to be solved that why we could not come up to the expectations of the people. So I cannot blame any person, any, any event. I think uh, this, is, this will take time to understand, to, to understand what, what happened. Umaji, you seem to be saying that it will take time to understand, you will not blame uh, anybody. But do you believe that the BJP suffered because it did not present a clear chief ministerial candidate, that there seemed to be a turf war between yourself and Rajnath Singh, for example? I personally have decided not to get into this matter, who will be the Prime Minister, who will be the Chief Minister, you know, why so and so was not the Prime Minister candidate, and why so and so was not the Chief Minister candidate. I don't want to get into this. But that is true that people wanted a proper replacement. And I'm really concerned about the people of the state because it's Savadbari party is the same party who used to rule the state. I worry for the people and I think my task is very hard ahead because I have to take care of my assembly seat and I have to take care of the state also. So uh, you just mentioned prime ministerial. Are you in any chance in the lineup for one of the candidates of prime ministerial <laughs> candidate for the BJP? <laughs> I'm saying I don't want to get into this debate. 
<laughs> so that means you. That means if you say I don't want to get into it, means if I'm asked, if I'm forced to, if they twist my arm, I might. <laughs> But Uma ji, when you say you don't want to get into it, are you hinting there that it was a problem? It was a problem that the people did not know whether when you went campaigning you were a chief ministerial candidate or not. Was that a problem? No, I am telling you I don't want to get into this debate. <laughs> What has happened to the new Uma ji? You used to be outspoken, daring. Now you become uh, uh, very mild. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I take it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jaitley, would you like to take that question? Was that a problem? That, that just like Rahul Gandhi was seen to be somebody from the outside, not growing ro roots uh, uh, in a sense in UP, that the BJP failed to, to put, a, put one single face on its campaign? Well, this can always be a debatable issue, whether you, uh, putting up a candidate in front does help. And the argument in favor of this is that the personality of that person becomes the face or the symbol of the party. His social base becomes an add-on to the base of the party and therefore it may help you. There is an alternative calculation by which we went for that we project a collective leadership. Therefore, all our campaign material had Rajnath Singh, Kalraj Misra, Uma Bharati on it. And therefore, we collectively use all these leaders and put them up in front. If we are seriously in the running for a chief minister, we'll announce our chief minister. Otherwise, we'll simply elect the leader of the legislative party. Uh, Arun, looking back, a mistake, a mistake that you would concede. People have conceded many things today. Uh, Rahul Gandhi has come out and said, I take the blame. Who in the BJP should take the blame for its performance? Well, I don't believe in these personalized campaigns or personalized blames. We contest as an organization, all of us take responsibility. All of us collectively take responsibility for victory or for defeat. Because if we started going by these suggestions that I take a blame and I resign, tomorrow I am not going to get Barkhadat to handle the BJP elections. Still the same 15 people have to handle them. Therefore, I'm not going to... That would be quite a job. Try me. That would be quite a job. Try me. You want to replace Uma? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can yeah. replace Uma. Shai Siddiqui, I you're mean, being very quiet, which is I most mean, unusual for you. I just want to ask you, we've been talking about this new formula of com continuity and change. The older, elder statesman like Mulayam and the younger uh, leader like Akhilesh uh, symbolizing change. Is that an important formula, formula now, continuity and change? Would either one have been able to win this election without the other? Absolutely. Uh, people want continuity and people also want change. Uh, that is the tradition in Uttar Pradesh that people want elders, elders to be there with their experience and people want to look up to the future with a younger person and I think that that formula is doing very well in Uttar, has done very well in Uttar Pradesh and in the coming time I am sure that this combination will work very well uh, we, we will have our roots in the in the hinterland of UP and our branches not only in UP but outside UP we will we will emerge as a as a important national player. Right. This is not a prescription for family rule because the younger person can only get in if he's the son of the older person well, that is dynasty politics. Then it's yeah. dynasty politics. Not necessarily. If if you have if you have a if you have an experienced leader in your party and a younger leader to project, that, that should be done. How it, many it times, Shahid to Siddiqui? Be a and son. How many times have you accused the Congress of dynasty politics in the last ten years? <laughs> Too many to come. Tell the truth. <laughs> uh, you see, in India. This, this question, you see, it requires a larger debate but because yeah. in India we are passing through a phase where we have entered democracy but we have not been able to get rid of socially, not get rid of our feudal structure, feudal values, which in a way is not bad because if you are moving towards a new kind of 
modern society uh, you should be able to maintain the older values unless you are able to build new values in your system and in okay. your society okay, so can I, ask uh, I think you? that that is a fine thing to happen I want to ask, I want to talk a little bit about the national picture before I take that back to Mr. Jaitley. Shahid Siddiqui, very interestingly, Digvijay Singh earlier on the program was talking about needing the Samajwadi Party's help and Akhilesh Yadav said he also believed the Congress would need them sooner or later. Now the BJP has been saying all along that look, there's already a covert deal that exists between the SP uh, and the Congress. Are you going to bail out the Congress in its tough times in Delhi, in Parliament, on the floor of the House and so on? <coughs> Why is it? Why is BJP saying there is a covert deal? There has never been a covert deal. There has been an open deal. We have been supporting B Congress at the center for the last seven, eight years. We have come to their rescue whenever they have. I mean, I what I meant was you call it the names have, in UP, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Sorry, you, I didn't get your you question. You call each other names in UP, but it doesn't really mean anything. That's what I meant. No, we, we, we are, we have, in UP, we don't need Congress, but of course, any party at the center, whether it's Congress or BJP, any state government needs their support because UP has to be rebuilt. Re UP needs a lot of help from the okay. center and we need help from BJP as well because any opposition party should come out and see that UP has to, to go, go on the path of development. And this uh, result is not just for electoral change, it is for a change in politics, it's for a change in, in UP's whole okay, okay, approach okay. towards uh, development and growth. Okay, Arun Jaitley, the big national picture. You said you sensed an anti-Congress mood. You're the leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha. How do you see this playing out on national politics? Sushma so Swaraj earlier in the day, when I asked her a question about the longevity or the survival of this mm -hmm. government, said that she believes midterm polls are very likely. Is that wishful thinking by the BJP? Do you even want an early election? Or are you terrified of early elections? <laughs> yeah. Well, I... I can't, I can't predict as to when elections will be held, but since uh, I see a weakened Congress, yeah. and therefore the Congress will have to take the lesson from these results, proper governance, effective leadership, more and more consultation with various political parties and opposition parties, then probably you can govern much better. But if they go about the way that they've gone in the past, I see a serious difficulty for them. As it is, their numbers in Rajya Sabha are going to come down even more. As far as the Lok Sabha is concerned, they have some inconvenient allies. And they were only hoping that in the event of a hung assembly, Samajwadi Party would be dependent on them. Now Samajwadi Party is curiously not dependent on them. And therefore is in a position to decide its stand on various issues independently. But, uh... Therefore the Congress will always be on its toes. But uh, don't you think that the Samajwadi party will never destabilize the center and, and force a general election because the Muslim voter would never forgive them if they did that? Well, I don't know as to what Samajwadi party would eventually do. Samajwadi party is from outside supporting the, uh, supporting the, the, the UPA. Uh, the Trinamool Congress is a part of the UPA. But there are several issues where I've seen them standing on us, our side. Right. In, in Parliament. Okay, let me just Therefore, ask the you, possibility of this I can't rule out. Quickly before, before I know you have to rush, but another analytical point that uh, a big change in this election, a 43% increase in women voter turnout. Women. More women voted than men. And uh, I'll ask Shahid Siddiqui after you answer, why was that and why did they vote for the Samajwadi party? Right. I don't know whether they voted for the Samajwadi yes, party uh, or otherwise. Our analysis otherwise. tends to show that wherever the high women turn out, okay. Samajwadi party did well, yes. Alright, that's quite possible. I think one of the reasons could be that women activism after the 73rd amendment has all increased. So when you have a lot of activism in the villages at the panchayat level, at the municipal level, now 50% of all municipal uh, uh, Council members across the country are going to be women. Panchayat members are women. And I think, therefore, women activism in politics so is generally point. on the increase. Good point. Good point. Uh, does that mean we may even see more uh, parties having more women candidates? <laughs> well, I hope that happens. But past experience has shown, unless we pass that amendment which we approved in the Rajya Sabha, yeah. with regard to a compulsory one-third representation in legislative bodies, yes. I don't know whether it will happen so easily.
Shahid Siddiqui, why did women vote for you? I agree with Arun Jetli and I also <coughs> believe that women were more concerned about corruption about, because they have to deal with the day-to-day -day life. And, and the way UP was going, the way uh, everybody was feeling the pinch, uh, the way administration was working, the way non-governance -gover was there. So I feel women have become much more uh, politically aware and conscious today, uh, thanks to TV also, because it, now it's there in every house and w women are able to understand and discuss politics. And I think that is one of the reasons that the youth went, went with Samajwadi party. And uh, of course, they, they, I, as, as you people always say, they, they may have like uh, Akhle's face more than Rao's. <laughs> And oh, maybe, it's all yours about that. maybe yours as well. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I don't, don't think women <laughs> vote on those ba on those grounds. So, yeah, certain co cuteness question never hurts. Okay. Arun, one last analytical point. Yes. Uh, this election again seemed to indicate, uh, which will probably be uh, please you as a national party, a kind of disconnect between local state elections mm. and Lok Sabha elections. We saw in Punjab. Akali's winning last time, doing very badly in the Lok Sabha, winning again this time. We saw in, Ut in Uttarakhand, BJP winning last time, getting wiped out in the Lok Sabha elections and not doing so badly this time. We've seen in Uttar Pradesh, the Congress going up to nearly 100 seats and going back right down again, 2230. Uh, this disconnect, is that going to help the BJP as a national party? So is this, sorry, is this well, an, this any indication of what's going to happen in 2014? Are these elections any indicators or there's a disconnect, total disconnect now? I think it's too early to predict a pattern. But there could be a disconnect. For example, you have elections where national parties do better in the states than, uh, than, uh, than the state parties. For instance, not only the Congress, the number of assembly segments we led in the Lok Sabha elections uh, in Uttar Pradesh was also a lot more right. and therefore there may be a difference in the two. Right, right. There is this growing disconnect between Lok Sabha elections where, peop where total different issues come up. Uh, Dorab, you've also noticed that. Yeah, the question is whether it's good for the national parties or bad for the national parties. But I think there is a clear disconnect occurring because also the people who, when you vote for the Lok Sabha, you're voting for a government there. Yeah. Well, right. the the, they're becoming minor players in bigger states. Right. So you aren't voting for them. I think the reason to vote is to get your person into government. Right. right. Well, we're going to say thank you to Shahid Siddiqui and uh, Arun Jetli. Thank we, you very much. It's a fascinating uh, election and really an election is going to be a game changer for uh, Indian politics. We're staying with our uh, special focus. One of the big questions that's coming up is uh, how much will the Manmohan Singh government be weakened by the verdict today? Will Mamta Banerjee pull the plug? She's managed to pick up about seven seats in Manipur fighting against the Congress. She's been in touch with uh, several non-Congress, non-BJP ministers. What kind of shadow does this cast over the UPA government? And what do the results mean uh, for Rahul Gandhi and his political cachet as we head into 2014? Let's introduce uh, our panel now. Uh, we have uh, tonight Jyotiraditya Sindhya from the Congress. We also have Sudhindra Kulkarni from the BJP, Neeraj Shekhar of the Samajwadi Party and Derek O'Brien, the Congress is shivering from the Trinamool Congress. So that's our <laughs> panel this evening. Jyotiraditya Sindhya, if I may start with you, utterly depressing results. We saw Rahul Gandhi coming out uh, saying he, he, he takes the blame, even family pockets of Raibareli and Amethi not doing well. Isn't it time uh, for the Congress to acknowledge uh, that you have to go deeper into organizational changes, that a family name is not enough, that even charisma is not enough, and that perhaps the interventions in Uttar Pradesh were seasonal and you failed to throw up a local strong regional leader? I think Barkha, uh, 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 there's no doubt about the fact that uh, uh, Rahulji put in a lot of effort uh, he also drew out a huge amount of crowds, a huge amount of voters. But the fact is that we could not translate that. And I think it's important for us as a party, the results are indeed very disappointing, uh, uh, suffice to say. And I think it's important to accept that verdict with all humility at our command and go back to the drawing board and see exactly what uh, in our strategy did not work and what is it that we need to do. To me, as a uh, simple Congress worker, there are two or three things that uh, 
do stand out in terms of what needs to be done. I think uh, Rahul ji also enunciated that uh, very, very clearly. I think at the organizational level, there is a tremendous amount of energy uh, that needs to be infused. Uh, workers at the booth level need to be identified. Uh, I think even in terms of candidate selection, uh, possibly there needs some introspection as to, uh, uh, you know, uh, did we make the right choices? Yeah. And finally, uh, also in terms of uh, promoting state leadership, but I think in order of priority, first things first, it has to be organizing the party at a booth level uh, in, in the state. And I think that needs the most urgent attention because Correct. everything else uh, has to fit into place for the result to be stupendous such as it has been for the Samajwadi and let me take this opportunity or to also through you congratulate uh, Akhilesh and Mulayam Singh Ji for a uh, stupendous result that they've been able to, uh, to uh, put in place. Right. Our singular aim was to dislodge the incumbent government, the BSP government, uh, which was known for its corruption. We went all out to be able to do that and we probably paid uh, a little, uh, we played our part in that exercise certainly. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, 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 from a positive standpoint, right. but it wasn't, obviously it didn't translate into the number of seats that we would like. Our vote share has gone up, but that's not a, enough as a consolation prize. Right. Uh, I, I, I agree with all the points you raised, uh, lack of a local leader, lack of a local presence. Um, but one other issue I would, uh, or two other issues I'd like to mention to you, which I found in, in when we traveled around Uttar Pradesh. A reflection of the lack of anything happening in the center, policy paralysis, and corruption at the center, did that affect how well you connected with the voter? Because they said these guys are not doing anything at the center, why should we vote for them here, number one. And the second we found is that Congress MPs and MLAs just don't go back to their constituencies for weeks. So voters say we don't even come here anymore, they live in Delhi. Uh, so these are two problems, how are you going to address them, policy paralysis and getting your MLAs and MPs to actually spend time in the constituencies? I think with your first notion, Pranoy, I don't agree with it because actually there's a lot that's been going on uh, at the central level uh, and specifically related to UP with uh, a result of uh, Rahulji's forays into UP over the last couple of years, whether you look at the whole Weavers package that was announced which was predominantly uh, uh, for Uttar Pradesh, uh, whether you look at the whole Bundelkhand package which covers areas of my state as well as areas of Uttar Pradesh, whether you look at NREGS being laid out uh, across the country, whether you look at uh, the NRHM uh, funds that right. were given to Uttar Pradesh which ended up in corruption uh, at the state level, uh, whether you look at uh, uh, the land reclamation uh, exercise in the uh, land right. acquisition bill as a outcome of Bhatta or Sol. Okay. So there's a lot that has happened, but I do not believe, and going back to the earlier part of your discussion, which I was a witness to just now, I don't believe that uh, n uh, national issues are issues at a state level or state issues are uh, issues at the national level. When you have right. a Lok Sabha election, there are national issues at play. When you have a state election, then there are state issues at play. Okay. Right. And neither is a referendum on the other. Okay. I know the BJP is a little chuffed in terms of the outlook that they have, but I don't think uh, in many ways, I think both national parties, the BJP and the Congress need to reflect because I think both national parties have not done really well in this round of elections. But you know what? Uh, whether it's the BJP with, a, with you know, five seats down in UP and a negative vote share in UP, in Punjab down from 19 to 11, in Uttarakhand their, prime, uh, their chief minister losing his own seat. Uh, and similarly, Congress as well. So I think what both national parties need to reflect on is what are the steps that need to be taken so that we can actually go back and acquire that space we'll from regional that, parties that fact, we have ceded to them. In fact, we'll put that to Sudhindra and, 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 and come back to you. But it's not just uh, uh, this, this very neat demarcation, as you suggest, between national and assembly elections. The fact is that one does impact the other, even if one doesn't reflect the other. For example, what will Mamta Banerjee do next? Derek O'Brien, um, this time the Trinamool has fought uh, against the Congress in Manipur, managed to make an inroad, but the large national question given all the recent differences where does the Trinamool stand vis-a-vis -vis these results how do you read them and how do you read them particularly for the Congress party see Barkha uh, how how we read them for the Congress party is a question I do not wish to answer 
<laughs> because that is for the Congress party to, to introspect or do whatever post-mortem they want. I think the key issues from Trinamool today, what, what we really feel is that today we, at, at celebrations of democracy like, like, like today, we understand what Trinamool literally means. Trinamool means grassroots. And you know, uh, I think that's, that's what has given us the results in 2009, in 2011, because Mamta Di, after struggle, years of struggle, has based this party on the grassroots. There is a perception, So Derek, I think that's... There is a perception, point taken, but there is a perception uh, that a weakened Congress means a more emboldened Mamta Banerjee who would like to see a general election earlier than scheduled. Uh, she's already been in touch with other non-Congress, non-BJP chief ministers. Can you set the record straight? I'm sure the Congress will breathe easier to hear from you one way or the other. Is Mamta Banerjee looking for an earlier election? See, I don't think this is the forum to discuss earlier elections. That everyone means yes. knows everyone's, that everyone, means yes. everyone knows everyone's term. One sec, Barkha. Everyone knows everyone's term. I think the bigger issue is if you see our track record with the Congress. We are at one political party, the Congress is another political party. And when we have a difference of opinion, we make absolutely sure to get that opinion across because we feel if, if it doesn't, if it's not for the larger good, we will stand up for it whatever the consequences. Right. So please understand, we are proactive in our decisions, so not reactive. I right. think this is a, this is a very key, key point in Trinamool which is often misunderstood. We are absolutely clear on certain issues. Okay. You right. tell me about FDI, you tell me about, everyone made a big fuss about Lokpal. Absolutely not. We had no issues with Lokpal. We were very clear about our view on Lokayuk. So right. Trinamool there Congress is, that, yes. is not a reactive, sorry. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I, I, I mean, I, we get the point and that's uh, uh, very clear what you're saying. But just to carry on what Barkha is saying, this is the general perception that the Mamta Banerjee and the Trinamool would like a general election while your honeymoon is on. And there is a perception that the honeymoon is disappearing fast. There are certain mistakes, this whole rape issue. Uh, but your main problem is nobody else wants an early election. And it's not going to happen no, while I your honeymoon is on. So are you going down I a path think, where think, nobody uh, else Dr. wants Roy, an election now? Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Doc Dr. Roy, yes, sir. Uh, since you use the since you use the the term uh, honeymoon, I'll I'll build on that analogy. Please do. This yeah. this <laughs> this this marriage we have with the Trinamool for Bengal is a, is already it's a very very old marriage. The be, the people of Bengal has give, have given us a huge responsibility after 35 years of butchering the state. We, you can be rest assured we'll be married to Bengal and the people of Bengal for the next 10, 15, 20 years. But will you be married to the Congress? So this is no <laughs> but will you be married to the I Congress? That's now the you, question. Now you want me to, you, you want me to indulge in bigamy. Um, uh, in, uh, bigamy. <laughs> I'm very liberal. Will you be married to the Congress? I repeat the question. See, I think, I think Barkha, I think Barkha, I, I think, I think here's, here's a big issue. Here's, here's a big issue. Trinamool equals grassroots, equal understands the needs of the people. I think this is Mamata Di's core. This is Mamata Di's core. If there is an issue which we feel very strongly about, okay. not because we feel, because we know, if we know that the, the, the larger partner in the UPA is treading down the wrong path, we will, we will bring it to the fore. Once, twice, three times, four times. Okay, okay. And I think, I think, I think it would pay heed that the Trinamool gets it right okay. more often Every than... Every time, I assume. Can I, can I get Jyotiraditya Sindhya to respond to what he's heard and then we'll go to the other panelists. Mr. Sindhya, uh, how much does the Mamta Banerjee keep the Congress awake at night? Well, I think all our uh, allies should keep us awake <laughs> at night. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a relationship that we have entered into and it's a relationship uh, wherein uh, there has to be a certain give and take and there has to be uh, certain issues on which we agree to disagree and that's about every good relationship but I think at the, the bedrock of that relationship has to be a relationship of trust has to be a relationship of convergence of uh, values, principles and morals and interests and I think there we are in complete convergence with uh, Mamta Banerjee 
and uh, I think it's a relationship that will last its term till 2014 and even beyond that hopefully. Right. Sudhendra, another analytical mind on elections. At the end of today, are you going to have a sleepless night? Worried? Uh, we will have a sleep. I will have a sleepless night thinking about why we did so poorly in UP. Because we expected to do better, and I can tell you that uh, the number that we have got and the the support base that we have and the network of workers that we have, there is a disproportion. We could have done much, much better with better strategy. But, you know, we are, not, uh, we are not disheartened. You know, we have seen many ups and downs in the history of the BJP. We have bounced back and we will bounce back again in UP itself. But when we look at the national scenario, just as the people of UP wanted change and also <coughs> a stable government, which is why they gave a complete decisive mandate to the Samajwadi party, a similar sentiment, a similar mentality will work <coughs> when it comes to the Lok Sabha elections. People want change at the centre and the people want a stable government, a strong government. That cannot be given by regional parties like the Samajwadi party. Can I put that to Neera the Shekhar? The BJP will lead change at the centre. May, 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 I, may I put that to actually both Neera Shekhar and I can see Derek's hand going up as well. Neera Shekhar, the Samajwadi party, you're hearing Sudhindra Kulkarni say that national changes cannot come from regional parties. What for you is the big message of this election? In fact, it's, it's a sad day for both national parties. That's why Mr. Kulkarni is saying that. <laughs> they, the, both the national parties have done fairly badly uh, both in Uttar Pradesh and elsewhere also, but uh, the, the voice is echoing. Can you can you hear? Yeah, me? we are getting you clearly. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, so, so that's why uh, the national parties always say that the regional party don't have say in the in the. I can't speak because I can. Okay, okay we'll come back, back. back to you. We'll, we'll fix it and come back we'll, to you. We'll Sorry about we'll that. Mr. Kul right. Mr. Yeah. Kulkarni, can I ask you a question? Is it that both yeah, the national it. parties, they seem to yes. do badly in state after state, where all the leaders have departed to Delhi and are not willing to work at the grassroots? Is that a major cause for both the central, wherever the state after state, where national parties do badly, that that is the main cause of the decline? You see, uh, both national parties have to reflect. I would not like to comment on what the Congress should do, should not do. As far as we are concerned, we have a major task on our hands to strengthen ourselves in a state like UP which sends 80 MPs. Unless we become strong and win back the trust of the people in Uttar Pradesh, we will have a very difficult task at the centre. We know this. Right. And we are going to work hard. Okay, right. but I want to go back to the point I made. You see, the people of India are today very mature. They know the they, they know the distinction between parliamentary elections and state elections. Yes, very much so. Yes. You know, you see, in 1996, in 1996, you had the United Front government, just some regional parties coming together. It was the most unstable government in the history of India. Okay, that's the point. You know, the two they, prime they, they ministers did not that. even last one year each. Right. Shekhar Gupta, you're sitting so silent there. I, 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 I'm sure you have about a hundred questions to ask uh, these gentlemen. <coughs> Chris, Chris, I would have asked Arun Jaitley, but he's not there, so let me ask Sudhindra. Sudhindra, Arun said just now that in UP, what's the harm in having a bunch of leaders and putting a bunch of portraits on your publicity, promotional, uh, literature, posters, etc., etc. Although, frankly, the only face we saw uh, displayed prominently was Mr. Bajpais, who unfortunately <laughs> cannot complain right now. But when you go to campaign in Gujarat later this year, will you still have six portraits on those posters? <laughs> when you went to campaign in, in the past, you know, in Chhattisgarh, in Madhya Pradesh, in Rajasthan, did you have pictures of six leaders, so what kind of nonsense is this? I mean, why, you, why do you 
believe that anybody would would take this seriously you have to admit that one you were not you had no hope of getting power in uttar pradesh and second you were not able to resolve internal issues so congress party does not project a leader for the simple reason that they think that choice should be made top down from the high command you made an exception in this case and did not project a leader simply because you had no discipline at the top in your party that's the truth and that that's the truth that the voters have acknowledged in uttar pradesh this time so dindra yeah you know uh, shekhar ji i want to admit that we have a lot of internal issues to sort out but you know ours is a democratic party you know that is what distinguishes us from other parties there are advantages and sometimes there are disadvantages you know okay. we have very capable leaders it's just that if we get more cohesion in the party we can do wonders and that's what we're going to do in the in the in the months to come we're conceding that this could have been a disadvantage let's let's step back and look at the national picture again jyotirititya sindhya what impact i'm sorry i i, I think shekhar tried to make a point shekhar give me a second i'm just coming back to you jyotir uh, what way do you think this changes the game for 2014 what are the lessons that every politician should take away from this verdict i think uh, uh, most importantly uh, again i, I want to preface my comment by saying that i don't think that uh, state elections are a referendum for uh, national elections uh having said that i think it's it's very clear that uh uh in in uh, at the state level or at a member of parliament level it's extremely important to have a very robust organizational network in place because that's the only way that you can translate the goodwill that you have through charisma leaders uh, programs everything else into actually tangible votes um so that combined with choice of candidate uh combined with state level leadership and i think these or all, all these factors among many other factors i think i don't think that this is the only uh three factors that go in but there are many many other issues that need to go in uh, but i think uh, grassroots concentrating at the grassroots is extremely extremely key okay uh, but i don't necessarily think that the uh the five states that have gone in for elections uh today the results that we've seen are going to impact at the national level uh in any uh manner or form whatsoever uh because also the national elections as we speak are close to 2 years away uh if not slightly more but and i know, think there's a lot of ground uh, and a lot of time wherein uh, all parties whether you, it's the congress the bjp the tmc or uh, yeah. or the samajwadi or but all the parties the, the, the uh to to transform themselves the and two years is, the uh, problem is things may happen before 2 years many things could go wrong before those 2 years are complete shekhar if i can I, I don't, I you don't think that i personally don't think so because okay. you you have a very very strong robust uh, uh coalition at I think, uh, at place in function at but is it a strong it's coalition the that's the point like, you're calling it a strong but robust but coalition well, if I, I i don't think i will make a point i think the, yeah derek tried to come in there yeah shekhar shekhar you got a question for derek shekhar you got a question for derek Shekhar go ahead I got a I got a question for Sudeep the first uh, No that uh, Derek Derek wanted to make a point uh, just uh, Shekhar on the big picture how do you believe Mamta Banerjee is going to play her next card and then we'll get Derek to respond to that I don't think Mamta Banerjee knows I I, I think this <laughs> this just watch this face but you know let me go back to Sudeep is Sudeep still there Yeah give yes. us a second because I'm just going to let Derek make his point and then we'll come yeah, back to Sudeep yeah. Derek go ahead I think uh, some uh, besides the point about grassroots and and the connect I think the big the big story for for today uh, as a st as a student of politics is that the regional parties moving towards the national space that's where the growth is happening and the national parties moving into the regional space so that it I think that's the big story today because if you look in so many states it's the regional parties who now have national aspirations and I don't necessarily agree that the national result is an aggregate of state elections i think it's a little different 
Okay, that's interesting. You're saying that actually, in a sense, the power balance has shifted. Neeraj Shekhar, you're back with us. You were trying to make somewhat of the same point, not agreeing yeah. with Sudhindra Kulkarni, uh, that the drivers of national change, in a sense, will have to remain the national party. Neeraj, we're hoping you can hear us this time. Go ahead. No, I can hear you. Go ahead, Neeraj. I was saying that uh, uh, Mr. Kulkarni is uh, telling us that they are national parties. If the national parties are like this, they get 40 seats in Uttar Pradesh. They are because of uh, JDU in Bihar. In uh, uh, Punjab, they are because of Akalis. They, they are also in somewhat not a national party as Congress is. They are, are, they are concentrated in few states. They are ruling few states. That's why they are calling themselves uh, a national party. They, the their strength in Lok Sabha is 110. Okay. If, yeah, the BJP I'm talking about, so the Congress is a national BJP, party. That are you I'm, questioning I, whether the BJP all... is a national party, is that, in a sense? Yeah, I'm, that, in the, yeah that's what I'm saying. Okay, but you're saying the, the BJP Mr. is in power in Punjab. Saying, so, Dhindra, take that. In power in Punjab because of the Akalis, in power in Bihar because of Nitish, and a rocky time in Karnataka. You see, there was a time when even the Congress yeah, party yeah. had 110 okay. seats in the Lok Sabha. Did it cease to be a national party? The point that I am making is, states. of course in some states we are in alliance with other parties, regional parties, but there are several other states where and we are on our own, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnatak, and we are trying to expand our base in states where we are weak. See, I don't, I don't ever belittle the importance of the so-called regional parties. India is a union of states. That's what you were saying. The center and the states both have to be strong. So we have to respect regional aspirations. They also have a national outlook. Well, okay. It's not that only the national parties are national in their outlook. While we are on this issue My point is that the BJP is well placed, especially don't, don't. after the NDA experiment, under the leadership of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the BJP is well placed to be the alternative to the UPA in 2014. Okay. While we are on this national versus regional, let me ask Derek O'Brien, uh, you are kind of spreading to Manipur. Congratulations on getting seven seats there. Thank you. But isn't it also true that most regional parties have never been able mm -hmm. to go beyond their state? Everybody's tried, yeah. Mayavati tried, everybody, they've experimented. Is, is that a, a route that the Trinamool is trying to take, expand beyond Bengal, but that's doomed to failure based on past uh, history? I think, uh, Dr. Roy, I, I, can't, I can't dispute your question in terms of history. You'd, you'd probably be right. Uh, but let me, let me dwell a little on Manipur. We thought Manipur was, was there was a space there, which, is, which was an opposition space. Congress have been ruling for so long, and people needed to express themselves. So there was a vacuum there. Every, there are 11 parties or 10 parties who fought as an alliance. We are the only party who fought on our own in Manipur, besides, of course, the Congress. So we, we and I'll tell you why, why it was Manipur, because peace and development were very big agendas in Bengal, which we've del delivered in the last nine months. That's a big requirement in Manipur. And the language of Manipur, the script, and the Bengali script is identical. So, so we saw a, a beautiful fit to offer the people of Manipur our plank of peace and development. But Derek, so does your party just, you know, have a national aspiration now? That's the question, really. Of course, it, uh, the, uh, the answer of that is of course. And there are some technicalities to that. To be, a national, to be a national party, you have to be X percent. We also have five MLAs in Arunachal. We have one MLA in Assam. Now we have seven MLAs in uh, Manipur. Uh, I and actually meant, were you dreaming or, with one eye on Delhi? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, this is the point I'm trying to make, Barkha, in my earlier point. It's not about dreaming about why... Uh, uh, okay. we, we have a mandate to run Bengal okay. for five years. Derek, okay. I have also... And, and, and in the first... Dr. Roy, just... Yeah, yeah, go seconds. ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. You're, 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 <laughs> you're, the most, you're the most polite channel. You'll give, me a, you'll give everyone a chance to speak. 100%, Thank please, you. sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. And on Sunday, we celebrate 300 days of governance in Bengal. So we've, we've got off to a crackling start in Bengal, albeit with a learning curve. We've got off to a crackling start. And, 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 the earlier point I was making, the earlier point I was making, and I really, 
is it's the it's the regional parties that that's the way to go the regional parties who are going up with the national aspiration okay because that is so i think that's the key barkha sorry you had a question no i was just saying both you and uh, and neeraj shekhar interestingly are making that important point and and derek you you said it interestingly you said the national parties are trying to enter spaces dominated by regional parties and the regional parties in a sense are trying to fan out uh, 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 into the national space but i have a question for derek whether he finds being in the opposition little easier than being in government <laughs> <laughs> Where in, in, are you? You are refer, you're referring to when Manipur. When he said crackling, a crackling Manipur, start. Manipur, Manipur. <laughs> no, I think he means Bengal. Oh. I think the question is no, about no, Bengal. I think, sorry, I think in the centre, anywhere, think, wherever I, you are, you're, you're I think no, no, no. Tremendous I think, opposition. I think, I think in Bengal, in 294, 95 days, as I said, we are a party called Grassroots. A lot of work has been done in Bengal. we haven't been coming on television channels to talk about it but believe me there is a lot of great work happening in bengal okay. and the and the and the okay, communists Derek, are far, far away okay i've got to interrupt away they okay i've got to interrupt yes. there the communists you believe are far away you've done great work but these are very volatile times between the trinamool and the congress and to which takes me to my my final question to jyotirditya sindhya the congress has been accused by many people of arrogance that arrogance undoes you each time the trinamool for example has accused you of political arrogance not taking it along many of your projects at the central level have fallen by the wayside because consensus is not created going into the session you're going to need the samajwadi party you're going to even need the bsp to get a nominee uh, elected for president do you think the congress needs to do some serious soul searching on how you have handled your allies because you do not have a clear majority you're a party ruling without a clear majority well i personally don't think barkha that we've done uh, a bad job in terms of uh, trying to develop a, a common path with our allies but having said that if there are certain shortcomings uh, you live and learn and we are we are more than happy to make a greater effort uh, be more diligent on that front because it's only when uh, we take our allies along with us that ultimately the common uh, minimum program that we've all decided to uh, adhere to and put our stamp upon will become a reality and therefore we intend to certainly do that and if there are uh, areas where we can improve we'd be more than happy to do so okay gentlemen i uh, think thanks very much and uh, derek thank you particularly for saying we're one of the politest channels uh, thank you <laughs> yes, all for joining us and straight after you said that barka interrupted you i mean you know <laughs> you've got to be unpredictable <laughs> <laughs> well thank you all very much well that brings us uh, barka dora shekhar and me to the end of this show tonight uh, on a fascinating day a fascinating day where history has been made in these elections three new trends have emerged in these elections first that women voters came out in bigger numbers than men for the first time in history because mainly i guess the election commission simple new scheme of distributing voter slip house to house women are going to matter more and more in future elections mark my word second the new combination of continuity and change the elder statesman and the son mulayam and akhilesh prakash singh badal and sukhbir badal the new winning formula is it father and son and third the increasing distance between national elections and state elections you can win one and get thrashed in the other so in the final analysis is been let's face it a really bad day for the congress there is little doubt that the central government is weakened after today but if they have to scrape the bottom of, of the barrel and take heart they will see that you can lose states and win national elections and they may also have the formula that they don't know of yet continuity and change with sonia and rahul but for the bjp it's been a relatively good day holding on to punjab winning goa and almost breaking the anti incumbency force in uttarakhand but doing really badly in uttar pradesh but the real winner as uh, barkha has been discussing the regional parties and is that the lesson for the future india's politics regional parties thanks very much for watching from all of us good night bye bye
और जात धर्म से ऊपर उठकर के वोट मिला है क्या पूरी पार्टी चाहती है कार्यकर्ता चाहते हैं कि नेताजी मुख्यमंत्री बने मैंने कैंपेन लड़ा है और मैं आगे खड़ा था तो जिम्मेदारी मेरी है ऑर्गेनाइजेशनली वी आर नॉट वे वी शुड बी इन यूपी एंड जनरली देर वॉज अ मूड फॉर द समाजवादी पार्टी विच इज प्रिटी अ पैंड एक रली मिली अनुभूति है जिसे कहते हैं कहीं खुशी कहीं गम एक्चुअली इट वॉज अ प्रो एंड कम्बंसी फैक्टर Kind of numbers and created history. Congress is wiped out.